So, hello everyone and welcome to my talk about the magic of solar energy. This talk is done for the European Research at Night. And now a question arises in your mind, what is the European Research at Night? It's a Marie Curie action founded in 2005, nowadays held in more than 430 cities in 27 different countries. And the goal? The goal is breaking the walls that divide scientists on one side and the general public on the other one. How? With funny talks or interactive game or something exactly like the thing that I'm doing right now. Because yes, I'm part of this community, I'm a PhD student studying at ICFO, the Institute of Photonic Science in Castelldefels, close to Barcelona, and today I'm talking to you about energy. Energy is not something that is created and not something that is destroyed, but it is something that transforms. And if there is one thing that science taught me, that is that if you want to describe the complexity of the world around us, you just need to put it into a simple scheme, as a metro map does with the complexity of the city as Barcelona. So let's pretend that energy is a passenger on this metro line, and it is able to move, it acts to transform, between different stations or different forms of energy, like the potential energy, the gravitational energy, the fossil fuel one. It is exactly from this station that we take today the majority of the energy that we use. Uh, the fact is, when we burn these kind of molecules, which are the fossil fuels one, Yes, of course, we produce the energy that we need, otherwise it would be a bit useless. But we also produce CO2. And CO2 is this double molecule responsible of the absorption of the infrared radiation from the surface of Earth and re the re-emission of it toward the surface of Earth itself, producing an increase of temperature that is known today as the global warming effect. To solve this problem, in 2015, more than 190 countries gathered together in what is the COP21. In this meeting, they decided not to exceed uh, the 1.5 uh, degrees over the average temperature that we have had until now, and they decided to do it, becoming carbon neutral before 2050. How to do that? And what does carbon neutral mean? It means that for every molecule of CO2 that you put into the atmosphere, you have the duty of taking this molecule out from it. So how to do that? Decarbonizing fossil fuels or with direct removing of CO2 from the atmosphere or using renewable energy, it acts stopping putting CO2 into the atmosphere. So going back to our lovely map, instead of taking energy from the fossil fuel station, Let's just move to one of the other many stations that we have here, for example, a bigger one, or Plaza Catalunya. In this case, the solar energy station. The living world is essentially solar powered. The Earth's plants capture three trillion kilowatt hours of solar energy each day. That's almost 20 times the energy we need just from sunlight. So 20 times the energy we need just from sunlight. If we give a look at the radiation map on the surface of our planet, we can see that there are places ranging from 1000 until 3000 kilowatt hour per meter square solar power. Now, these numbers may be like random numbers for you, but if you take into consideration that an average house, for example, your own house, consumes more or less 10,000 kilowatt uh, hour per year in order to, to survive, then you would need only five meters squares of solar panel to produce the energy that you would need for life. That would be true if the efficiency of these solar panels was 100%. That's not the case because the market is nowadays run by uh, silicon photovoltaic systems, which have an efficiency close to what is the theoretical limit, and that's 25%. But recently, a new technology arised, 
and this technology are the organic photovoltaic systems. These systems are lighter, more environmental friendly and transparent, so you can use them in the windows and you would have nice windows and at the same time you would produce energy. So they have a big problem anyway, that their efficiency is really low and close to 10%. So my question is, is there a way, and in case which one, to increase this efficiency? Well, let's get inspired by nature. Because nature knows how to do that due to the photosynthesis and the way in which it does it is using chloroplasts in which there are membranes able to absorb light from the sun, convert it into separated charges and then these separated charges are converted in organic molecules. Do not consider the second part because we only need separated charges in order to produce electricity with photovoltaic systems. So this conversion is done due to chlorophyll molecule, which are organized in circular structure called LH2 in the case of bacteria, but now these are details. Well, LH2 means light harvesting systems. Why? Guess what? Because they harvest light from the sun and they're able to harvest this light and pass it from one molecule to another in this kind of energy hopping between them until they reach LH1, that's the light harvesting system 1, and finally get to the reaction center, where these photons are converted into separated charges, but with an efficiency that is close to 100%. So, my question is now, can we learn from them? Can we get inspired by them in order to produce new artificial, be inspired photovoltaic systems that have an efficiency higher than 10%. Of course, if you want to get inspired by it, you first uh, should be able to study it in the proper way. And that's exactly what I'm studying right now. So what I'm doing is having these membranes of LH2 molecules and I interrogate these membranes. So I send a pump pulse that is able to excite these molecules, so I'm giving to them energy, like the sun does, and then I observe how this energy is spread in the membranes. And after some time, I interrogate my sample again with a probe pulse to understand where this energy arrived. In a simple way, it's, like, it's really like shouting at it, hey, where is the sun? Where is the energy now? And it may answer with fluorescent signal or reflectivity signal. It doesn't matter. This is the basic idea. So exactly as when a drop of water falls into a lake and you can see these waves spreading all over the surface of, of the water, I send a pulse, a pump pulse, and then I study how much this energy spread over the sample. And the question that I ask myself is, how far does this energy go and with how much efficiency? And moreover, what does change if I change the, comp the special of organization of these molecules? So if I put them, for example, in a parallel way or in a zigzag way, how does this energy spread change, this distance change and this efficiency change? And moreover, is it only one kind of energy, the one that is spreading on the sample, or do I have more kind of energy and there is a transformation between different kinds of it? Just to go back to our transformation map. So trying to answer to these questions, I'm trying to understand how to make in a lab these new bio-inspired photovoltaic systems but scientists can do their work by themselves because they can create this system, they can design them and then maybe they can also put them into industry but we need sensibilization from the general society in order to spread these ideas and use them. So yes, we are working on use part photovoltaic systems but would you give us your hand? With this, 
I would like to thank you all for having listened to me and I ask you to follow the YouTube channel de la NIT de la Ricerca and follow our plan activities at lanitdelaricerca.cat.